Hey, what's up? This is Gary from Raz Rentals. So, December was quite a trying time. Um, you know, you're, you're, you have to drive in all this extra traffic because you're going out and buying all your Christmas presents and you have to decorate and you have to get all this stuff ready. And then on top of that, man, the wait, the wait this, this December was awful. Um, in late November or early December, I started seeing on Facebook I got my Toka and Razar shipping notice. Oh, I got my notice. Oh, my, my, my packages are showing up in my house. Oh, I've got my notice. Oh, me too. I got it. And I just had to sit there and wait and wait and wait. Where's my Toka and Razar? Where is it? When's it coming? When's it coming? And then finally, January 7th, uh, your delivery will be ready and delivered tomorrow. And then finally, on the 8th, I was so excited. And it finally came, my giant box filled with Toka and Razar. Now, when these guys came in the mail, they came in this awesome bubble wrap. And, you know, I like this bubble wrap a lot. I mean, like, this covers the package very nice. It fits the outside of this very well. And then, oh my gosh, come on. More Kato. There it is. The set I was eagerly waiting for. The set that I thought Santa Claus didn't want to give me because I was a naughty boy all last year. But no, turns out things were just moving a little slow. And eventually I got it, January 8th, like I said. And you know, you take this thing out and it's just amazing. Like you look at it and these guys just look great. Like it's mind blowing how great you can have uh, of an action figure nowadays when you know before they would try to make movie accurate stuff and it never looked movie accurate like you'd have like little semi things going on but in general you were like man can the future get here any quicker i need these awesome movie accurate toka and razar toys already so you get this thing and you look inside you have this big window here so you can see toka and razar right in there you got a bunch of hands you have a fire extinguisher, you got some weapons that they can hit each other with, you have donuts, you have Razar shield, uh, you have a donut box, there's a TGRI canister in there. Man, tons of great stuff. You got Razar on the side here. And by the way, Razar, Razar, what do you say? Um, I kind of go back and forth. I don't have a specific pronunciation. So, um, here you go. You got two guys, you got a nice picture of both of them next to each other. You have a nice shot up here that looks just like the movie. You know, this is just like the scene where they're tricking them with the donuts. And then, you know, down here it says express yourself includes articulated facial features. Now that to me is just like mind blowing that NECA was able to do this. And you know, unfortunately for some people, they got these and you know, their tokas were missing eyebrows and all this other stuff. So luckily, I haven't noticed anything missing in here yet, but like, if you're one of those people, man, I'm sorry. That's, that's a bummer. And apparently NECA didn't make like extra copies, so they can't replace them. You know, you're either stuck in a partial refund, and I think that was it. So, oh man, hopefully they, hopefully they can smooth these things out a little bit in the, fur, in, the in the future. So, I'm going to open these guys up, move them around a little bit, make sure everything's not, everything, make sure everything's copacetic, you know, and uh, I'll get back to you in a minute. I also want to point out on the bottom here real quick, it says design and development, Randy Falk, Trevor Zamet, sculpt, Jason Fraley, and I got to give him a lot of credit because these guys look awesome. Fabrication, Roger Fernandez, Anthony Minichino, paint, John Wardell. Jeffrey Trapp, Packaging, Chris Ramo. Now, if I mispronounced any of your names, I apologize. I don't speak talk so good, so, you know, sorry about that. And uh, on the top here, there's a nice shot of Toka and Razor. It's very dark right now. But, you know, wanted to give credit where credit is due. Good job, team. Can't wait to see what else you guys put out. Here's Toka and Razor, finally free from their cardboard and plastic prison. You know, right off the bat, look at these guys. These guys look amazing. You know, these are some of the best looking action figures I've ever seen, especially based off of a movie, because they look just like how they looked in the movie. And, you know, some of that might be because they're, you know, uh, masks and suits that they're able to capture the likeness so well. But regardless, they look fantastic. Um, there's lots of things on here that match the movie almost exactly. So, you know, that's all good stuff. Uh, they move pretty good. The joints move well. However... 
I was mostly only able to get like um like for the double jointed elbows and knees. Most of the times I've only been able to get like one of those joints to move. And then the other one is, I wouldn't say it's too hard. It's just kind of hard to get it to start moving. If you, like you, I don't know how it makes any, if that makes any sense to you. Like I'm trying to hold on to Toka. And first of all, it's hard to hold Toka because he has that giant spiky shell. So you're like jabbing your fingers and you're trying to move things. And you know, if only one joint moves around and it moves around very easily, that's perfectly fine with me. Just as long as it looks good whenever I have the arm bent. I'm not the biggest fan of uh, double jointed joints anyway. So um, the other thing is that like, you know, sometimes NECA toys, even though they look so beautiful and cool and awesome, uh, I kind of feel like an old lady because <laughs> um like an old lady who collects like porcelain dolls or something like that. Because like these look awesome, but they are also uh, seem very fragile. Uh, Toka feels really good, but there's on Razor, there's lots of things on him that could potentially break that is just very worrisome. Like if you look at him, he's got chains all over him. So, you know, you just got to be really, really careful here. And, you know, with Toka, you just have to be careful because you're going to end up jabbing yourself. Um, so, in general, though, they look awesome. They look just like the film. How much do they look like the film? Well, we're going to take a look at some pictures here and break it down. First, we're going to start with Toka because, you know, he's first in Toka and Razor. Here we go. All right, so here's the close-up of Toka. And uh, in general, the look is very close. It looks really good. Um, the only thing that's like a small minor nitpick of mine is that I would maybe have said that they should have put the lower eyelid up a little more to try to make him look like he's got more of an angry, evil squint. Because lots of times, if you're looking at him like from the side, like here, or um, in these other shots, he's always given like a very kind of nasty uh, glare at the turtles and stuff like that. But in general, back here with the figure and the uh, the card, he, he looks pretty good. You know, maybe some of the spotting doesn't match everywhere the same that it did in the movie, but it does enough, it does good enough a job that you really don't mind that much because it still looks very good. Obviously all this stuff matches up here. You have the rags around the wrists. He's got the, the leather gloves. Um, he has like the big pads around his knees. He's and he's got the very spiked shoulders. In general, he looks really good, you know. Like even the toes here and the feet have the same proportions that he has in the film. The muscle definition in his legs all looks very similar. He still has the same um his shell is the same uh shape. And they did a very nice job of matching up the, like, the dark stains on his shell from this to this. So, in general, they did a very nice job there. All right, if you look at this toy and uh, you just look at the general shape of his body, of, like, the calf, mu the calf muscles and the shape of the shell, and just even just the proportions of his arms, like, you know, the size of these pads and stuff like that, compared to everything... It, it's very close to the movie. They did a very great job here uh, matching this guy up as best as they could to being movie accurate. And um, if you want to you wanna get a crazy OCD here, let's go. Um, I counted the number of spikes around his shell. I think I've counted 35 spikes on the outer layer, you know, the outer uh, circle. And in the movie, I think I counted 34. So maybe I'm missing one from the movie. Who knows? But, um, you know, they're very close. If I'm sure that they probably have all the same shell the spikes there. I probably just missed one. And um, here you can see, like, the shell from the side here. And, uh, I mean, look at the, the shape of this. And then you look at the shape of how it looks in the movie. And once again very very similar like they did an excellent job of matching this guy's proportions up um you know my hat's off to them congratulations guys great job all right so with paint and sculpt this guy looks extremely well first of all there's so much nice texture all over his body like there's just so much wrinkles and even just like around his spikes there's wrinkles and there's so much texture to his body 
It's fantastic. Like the things like the rags, they look really good. They actually look natural and the paint on them is very nice too. It looks like they're white rags, but just kind of dirty. Like he's been playing in a junkyard. Um, um, his hands look really good. And, um, you know, the leather gloves on them are very nice. You have all these wrinkles, like I said, underneath his neck. They did a really good job here hiding all the articulation because you don't have pins on these guys anymore. So, you know, everything is pretty well hidden. And in general, he looks very solid. And, you know, there's nothing on him that is, like, unappealing to the eye. Now, if you look at his legs, like, they're very cool and they look very nice. And they are very, like I said earlier, the muscle definition on them is very much Totoka. Like... They look just like how it looks in the movie, and his legs are specifically a different way than the Ninja Turtles' legs are. Like, the you know, the Ninja Turtles kind of just have regular legs. They're kind of straight down, but, like, if you look at his, like, shins, they kind of arch inward. Same thing with his calves. So, like, if you were looking at that movie on just, like, a design standpoint, and you were looking at this figure, you would just be like, yeah, those, those match how his legs are supposed to look perfectly. Um, the shell is very cool, how it you know, goes from the front to the back here. And the de the detail on the back here is very nice. There's lots of little circles and, you know, all this other kind of stuff surrounding the spikes. Uh, it really helps everything stand out. The paint is really good, too. There's lots of little, like, um, almost like slits going up the, the spikes. I don't know. It's just like the, the natural kind of spiker, like, kind of bone kind of look. I don't know what you call that. Um... The pads are all really good too. They're very big and bulky. So, you know, essentially he's like, you know, like a big Ninja Turtle. So everything on him has to be one up compared to the four guys. Um, and his face looks really good. Like, when you have Angry Toka, he just looks very good. And they painted the pupils on him very straight, which is great too. Because I feel like he's piercing my soul looking at me with these eyes. Um, you know, he doesn't have one pupil all the way over here and the other one looking down and stuff like that. That's great. The only uh, problem on my Toka is he has a little tiny white, like, it looks like the, the same color as the teeth. So they got a little dot right here on the lips. And, you know, I was trying to think if, if there was a way I could remove that, but at this point I'd rather just leave it alone and, you know, not mess it up. Uh, because you can't get replacements or anything like that for these guys. These guys were only made for pre-order. And supposedly, they're never going to be available again. Yeah, I know, Toka. It's, it's crazy. It's crazy to think that. But that might be the case. Um, so here's something interesting. You might not have noticed it when you're watching the movie. Because most of the time you just see Toka's beak. But in that one scene when he's like attacking the people. And, uh, well, he's, attack he's, he's destroying that one street. You can see those little tiny teeth of his underneath the beak. And here they are on this guy. He's got those little tiny teeth up there underneath the beak. And uh, do you ever kind of get like the the feeling that this guy looks very much like a Skeksis? Uh, I, especially like in this shot with Razar, there, there's something in him that just screams Skeksis to me. So when it comes to articulation, this guy I think is done very well. Uh, like I said before, he doesn't have any pins that you can see really. So most of the, the joints are hidden really well. Uh, you have two joints in his head. Well, you know, his head and his neck here. And the way that his head lays on top of the neck, it looks very natural and covers it in a very good way. So, you know, he can look up almost like completely straight from the neck. And then you can look like that far down with, with the head. And then the neck can move up and down too. And, you know, his head can move from side to side. Um, it can rotate all the way around, but I'm not going to do it. His neck rotates too, but it's it stopped by where it, it connects to the, the torso. But in general, it's very good. Now, of course, I just moved his eyebrows. So you can move his eyebrows. That's crazy. So if you want to, you can have a worried Toka, like, like, huh? Or you could just have very angry Toko, like he's, he's going to kill you. And then also, also his beak moves up and down, which is a nice uh, little thing they got going on here. And uh, his mouth can open up, but, you know, I, do you ever... He never really opens up his mouth this much in the movie. But, you know, for your sake, you could make him look even angrier, even more vicious. 
Um, just like the Ninja Turtles, he has no articulation in the lower torso. He just has like a some articulation in here underneath the shell so that you can rock his upper body from side to side or front and back. He can move. Uh, that's good. In general, like I said, I think I said earlier, um, his joints are tight, but they're not too tight and they're uh, not too loose. So like he's got rotation in his shoulders and he has a hinge there, but it only goes up so far before the spikes stop the arm. Um, he does have double jointed elbows, but uh, like I said, I can only really get the one to move. I can get these joints to move on the top, but I can't really get the, the bottom ones too much. And I'm kind of worried that if I go even further than that, I'm going to like possibly break something on him. I don't know. And it's hard to grab him with this spiky shell and move this. But, you know, uh, I'm not a coward, I swear. So <laughs> I just, I just... I just don't want to break them, you know. You can't get replacement parts for these for this guy, and you know, like. And, and frankly, I, I don't appreciate the accusation either. I, you know, my parents raised me not to 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 follow peer pressure. So, stop trying to get me to do things I don't want to do. Down here, the hips uh, are very good, and I wish it. I kind of wish that they would re-release these old uh, movie turtles with better hip joints, because that is like one of the biggest problems with these movie Ninja Turtles is that the hip joints kind of suck and they kind of break very easily because the peg going from side to side is way too thin and uh, they just have a better uh, system in here where they have the thicker peg and there's a ball on both sides and then you kind of have this thing wrapping around that ball so that, you know, it very smoothly moves around on that ball. And, you know, you can rotate it all over the place. You can, uh, you can rotate it, like twist it around the ball and if you know what you can't do with that, there's also like a cut where the hip connects to that piece in there so that the hip can actually rotate around that piece too. So you got double twisting abilities there. Um, the knee joint here is very good. I like how they did this a lot too because they painted the bottom of his leg and the, the top of his shin here to, and like made it look like the actual pad. So when you bend his leg, it just looks like a continuation of the, the pad. Um, they did a really good job with that. Um, it's a, of course, his knee is double jointed, so you can. It has a hinge on the top and hinge on the bottom, and both um, sides do rotate around. And then for his ankle, he has a hinge, and he also has ankle rockers. They're a little stiff, but they're still pretty good. And I'm pretty sure that's it. Did I mention the mouth? The mouth moves. If I didn't mention it, if I did mention it, uh, again, the mouth moves. <laughs> And that's all he's got, but he's very good. And I would say, too, that the hands, um, you can take out the hands very fairly easily. Um, with my Super Shredder, I accidentally broke a hand, but these hands, I think, are big enough that the pegs come out very easy. And you can switch the hands with the other hands he comes with. What hands, you might be asking? Well, I'm glad you asked. He's got uh, two, or I'm sorry, he has three sets of hands, uh, six hands all together. So first you have more of these open palm hands and um, you know you can either get him to express that he's like coming in for the attack or you know you can have it so that he's kind of grabbing them a little bit. Up next Toka has a set of gripping hands and you can use these gripping hands to grip this pipe that he has. One thing you can say about the movie is that uh, in general Toka and Razar like never hit the Ninja Turtles. They mostly just throw them. Like I don't think they ever punch them once. They just grab them and throw them. And then they grab them and throw them again. So I was trying to see if you could kind of get them in a, a, a position here where Toka looks like he's grabbing Donatello and throwing him. And uh, you can kind of do it. I was using the more open hand on the bottom and the tighter gripping hand on top. But the problem is, is that the, the joint isn't strong enough to support this figure. So the hand kind of came down a little bit and is resting on the leg here. Um, but he can, it does hold Donnie in place. So you can balance it so that Donnie is lifted a little bit off the ground. Up next, Toka has a set of fists. Um, they're not like completely like closed. But I guess maybe if you were like an actor, 
you know, this is where you're kind of like, I don't know, I'm not really making excuses or whatever, but if you were an actor and you had these gloves on, it would be really ex hard to make an actual fist. So you would have like a little bit of a hole probably in here when you're trying to close your hands. So um, maybe it's more movie, movie accurate than you think. But, um, you know, it's like I said before, Toka and Razar, they never hit the turtles. So you can pretty much only use these fists when you're trying to get him to dance the ninja rap. All right, so up next we have Razar, or Razar, Ro, Ra, Rez, Toka, Razar, Razar. Um, so here is Razar, and you know, again, he looks very good. He looks pretty much the exact same as he did in the movie. If you look at the proportions in the face here, they match, you know, almost perfectly. Uh, I think that this one looks a little more evil, which I'm okay with. Because for me, I always preferred Toka in the movie. I thought his face looked better. So, you know, any kind of um, improvements on this is fine with me. There's just like something a little maybe odd about the the way that they did the, the face. For me, that he's a wolf. I feel like, you know, there's some things about this I like a lot better. He definitely looks a little scarier. He almost looks like the, the way his, the mouth looks, it doesn't look just kind of wet. It kind of looks bloody. So that's kind of cool. Um... Here's one thing is that he has very specific um, pupils like he well his iris. He's got a black pupils and then he kind of has like a um, a brighter color around that. And then he has the blue around that. And they actually did a pretty decent job of, you know, copying that. Obviously, these eyes are they had to be painted very small. So it's hard to get that detail in there. But um, I'm, I'm just, in general, I'm just glad that the pupils on this guy are painted straight and that they're not all over the place. All right, so here's a look of how Razar looks in the movie compared to this toy. As you can see, the chest plate looks really good. He's got the shoulder pads, but you can't really see them in this picture. Um, his arms are, they're not symmetrical. He doesn't have this, um, this tire armor on both sides because in the movie, when he first appears to fight the turtles, uh, he's holding a shield. So he only has the wraps on that side. Um, you can see the loincloth, you can see the the tire armor, it's really good. And you even have these little, like, tube, whatever they are, kind of armor for his knee pads. Like I said, it's it's hard to get, like, good shots from this movie because, um, first of all, the movie is very dark for some reason, so you have to brighten them all up. And there's not a lot of promo shots that are um, in a, a nice size that you can really compare with this guy. Here's a better shot of uh, his shoulder pads and how you can see it in the film obviously it's a uh, very close it matches pretty nice even his loincloth is done really well he's got you know two loincloths on top of each other the a black one and a lighter one underneath and you can see here that you know again along with the uh his pads on his thighs uh this all looks very good again i watched that interview with trevor when he was talking with the foosh and one thing he was talking about with uh, Razar here was that it was hard figuring out how to do his back because there's no, like, I guess, publicity shots of his back from way back when. And you kind of only barely get a, a glimpse of it. So here's a, a shot from the movie where he's, like, spinning around and you can see his back. And, um, you know, they did a really good job. I think part of what he was kind of talking about was just kind of how the chains lay on the back. So you can see that they... I think, like, I can't really tell because it is dark and I had to brighten up these photos to to see what was there. But, you know, does it matter? It looks great. So, like, even if it wasn't 100% movie accurate, it still looks awesome. And here you can see uh, Razar and Toka from a, a profile view. Just so you can kind of see the, you know, along with Toka, they really did a good job of matching the proportions of Razar's face. Uh, Razar is awesome looking. You know, there's so much detail in his whole body. Like, um, there's just a lot of hair texture all throughout all of his arms and, you know, his legs and his head and all this other kind of stuff. He's just loaded with, you know, fur texture. The only thing is that when you're, you're moving this guy around, he does feel very, like, fragile um, because of these chains. And I've seen online where people have posted that um some of these chains have disconnected so that like the the chest plate is like falling off so it's like i don't want to mess with it at all um so like stuff like that is just like one of the downfalls of these 
collector toys, I guess, is that, you know, you have to be so careful with them because this is it. Like, what else are you going to do? If this broke, right, I'd be stuck going on eBay to try to get another one. And I probably would, would even do that. I would just kind of sit here and stare at my broken Razar armor. So like I said before, there's just a ton of ton of texture, like all over this. Uh, Oliver's snout up here, he's got the hair. And you know, hair is a tough thing. You know, first of all, hair is tough to draw and hair, I'm sure, is pretty hard to sculpt, you know? You have to do it in a way that looks right and doesn't look just kind of weird. There's a lot of uh, little details all over this, like this grill here. I can't read the words, but it looks as though there's like a something there that you can read. And I'm not really sh even sure like what some of these pieces are. Like what are these, what are these bits from? Is that from like a, like a grill or something like that? Or like your stove? I don't know. Please let me know. Um, you know, his armor is made out of tires and there's spikes pushed through them or probably screws or nails, I guess. Um, I never could tell in the film. But they look awesome. I, mean, I don't know. It's just, what else? What what can you really say about it? The sculpt on this guy just looks amazing. These knee pads are great. Again, you have these little tiny circles on the sides of them, and you have the tassels, and just like the attention to detail is exquisite. Um, the paint on the fingernails looks really good. They're not sloppy or anything like that. Um, you know, you really got your money's worth here. Um, the wraps around the wrists look good. As I showed before, his back looks very nice. Like, what, is, what are these things, too? These, like, little d metal discs on the back. He, he really likes tassels, though. He's, he, he's a fancy wolf. And, like I said, just the sculpted hair and the paint inside of that looks fantastic. And, you know, you can see his feet here. And uh, they do show his feet a little bit in the film. It's kind of, you know... You'll miss it if you're not looking. You know, they might be a little bulkier in, in the film. Uh, but, you know, they still look good. And then, like, I don't, I wonder if the actual suit even has, like, these pads on the bottom of his feet. That's a, that'd be interesting to find out. Because, you know, Toka had, like, flat feet so that Michelangelo could um, tickle them. So I wonder what they had on the bottom of Razzar's feet. You never see that. And like I said... You know, the mouth looks really cool in here. Like, it doesn't look like slobber. It looks like he was almost like... Like, look at his tongue. It's so dark in there. He looks a little freaky, I gotta say. But he looks awesome. Alright, so let's start from the head and work down to the bottom with articulation. Um, first, he only has one joint for his head, and that's... No, actually, there's... Is that a second? Yeah, he's got two. He's got one right at the base of his head... And then there's like a little tiny neck piece in here before you get to the upper torso neck piece. So you got a little bit of extra movement in there so you can turn his head from side to side. And like that movement looks looks pretty good. He can look up pretty high and down pretty low. I guess maybe I should have him more so that his head's scrunched down a little bit more like in a movie. But uh, be careful of your chains. That's all. That's the only thing. All right. So his mouth opens and closes, but mine, it's it's a little better now. For a while there, when I was trying to close his mouth, his mouth wouldn't stay closed. It kept on like slowly coming back open, but now it seems like it's it's doing better. Um, he has one uh, cut right here in his upper torso, so you can rotate him around. But like like I said. I'm not even trying to mess with it too much just because of that chain there. It doesn't feel like I can rock him back and forth. It just kind of feels like rotation. Um, his shoulders have a... They can uh, swivel and they have a hinge. He has double elbow joints. I've only been able to get like the bottom of the joints to move. So that's as far as I can get with that one. I can't get this other one to really move without it like feeling like it's starting to bend, you know, and you don't want that peg in there to bend and get warped and, you know, whatever, possibly snap. Um, but they both, they both rotate. And if you can get them to work, they both have a hinge. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll mess with it more later. His hands have a swivel. You can sw turn them all the way around and they got a hinge in them. 
just like Toka, he has uh, changeable hands. Um, it doesn't seem like there's a cut down here for the torso to the, the lower torso to rotate. Now, um, he has the same hip articulation that Toka has. That you know the ball with the the cover on top of it that works really well. So you can move it out. You can move it forward and back. Supposedly, they're supposed to replace the... I think they're going to bring out the Toon Turtles with that um, new hip articulation. That'll be great. Um, his knee joints are actually single knee joints. And again, I like how the, they actually have the top of the, the knee here painted underneath this pad. So no matter where you put it in there, it comes out and it's still covered. That's great. I love when people do that kind of stuff. Uh, on the back, though, it's you can see the hinge is unpainted and it's brown so that is kind of a bummer but most of the times we'll be looking at this guy from the front and the knee joint can rotate and uh finally his ankle has a hinge and he has ankle rockers just like toka razar comes with three sets of hands so six hands all together first he has these uh, more open palm kind of gripping hands like they're they're like, you know, they're gripping, but they're also kind of big enough that they, you can really just use them for like expressions. They're pretty much the only hands that he has that he can use to hold this, uh, this plank of wood. Next, uh, Razar comes with four like tighter gripping hands. Um, you know, but unlike, uh, Toka, one of them isn't like the shape of a fist. I don't know if maybe they gave me the wrong ones or something like that, because if you look at both of these hands, um, try to, there we go. All right, if you look at both of these hands, they are just barely smaller than the other. I guess maybe these are, these are, maybe these are a little tighter. This one here, right here. But, uh, this is one of those things where they, you know, they gave it like a green peg or like a gray peg. So... You know, it, the, the paint is wearing off of it and it won't match in the hand, or like in the wrist. Um, these are the ones I think I'm thinking of more. Like these ones are just barely different. If Even if you look at here, they are almost the exact same size, the whole. So, I don't know. You know, when I was a kid, probably my favorite thing about uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 The Secret of the Ooze was Toka and Razar. Like, these guys were great. They were gigantic. You know, they were monstrous. The only thing that I wasn't so cool about was, you know, that they were babies and they were kind of stupid. They were like, oh, mama, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, that wasn't for me. But, you know, presence-wise, these guys look awesome. I mean, they're huge. They looked way more scary than the turtles. They look like they actually um, were a threat to the Ninja Turtles. And, you know, having these guys on your shelves, it definitely translates to that now. Because the scale of these guys compared to your Ninja Turtles is just ridiculous. They're huge compared to them. If you thought all I was going to talk about was Toka and Razar, you're dead wrong. Because these guys come with a ton of cool accessories. Now, let's start with the most exciting one of all. Uh, a piece of wood. Ooh, it's, it's a piece of wood. I know. I know, I know, I know. It, it's cool. Uh, it has a very nice texture on it. It actually has like looks like bite marks on it and stuff like that It's very cool. You can use it to bash the turtles Next you got a piece of pipe and uh, You know you can use this to either hit Toka in the head or uh, the turtles and you know This is cool. It has a very nice texture on it. The paint looks good on it I was actually curious because it seems a little like bendy I was wondering if you could bend it sort of like uh, Razar bends it in the, in the movie, but that doesn't seem to be possible. Next you have the TGRI canister, and this is the exact same one that came with uh, Super Shredder. And as I said in the Super Shredder video, uh, they did a really nice job matching the green from the movie with this thing. I think it looks great. Next you have a fire extinguisher, and now this might be like a... You know, maybe just me being picky or whatever. But I kind of feel like maybe they should have given you two of these at least. That way you can have the turtles, um, you know, shooting CO2 into both Toka and Razar's mouth at the same time. Up next you have the donuts from the end of the movie. Uh, these look very nice. They have a very nice uh, 
like paint on them. This is very bright. Why is it so bright? So it looks like they're frosted or, you know, they got nice stuff on top of them. Very cool. And you know what's even cooler than that? Why that they come with their own box, of course. And look at this, Simply Donuts. Simply Donuts, Simply Donuts. Um, if you remember the movie, oh, they put the donuts in here so that before their fight with Toka and Razar, they can have their traditional pre-fight donuts. Pre-fight donuts? Oh yeah. So you can have your toy Michelangelo holding your uh, donuts in his hands, just like he does in the movie. Uh, only this Michelangelo, he looks like he needs to lay off the sugar. He's a little bug-eyed. You also get a donut that's uh, been eaten a little bit. And it has the little tiny cube. Oh my goodness. Of, uh, what do they call in the film? The uh, the chemical that they, they need to use to uh, reverse Toka and Razar's mutation. Razar can even hold it in his hand, just like the movie. And if you didn't think all that was enough, Razar here also comes with his shield, as seen here in the film. Now, when you have this uh, shield, uh, you can just kind of... It doesn't, like, clip on the hand. It has these straps here. And the straps, you know, they're kind of rounded. So you just kind of have to stretch them out to try to wrap them around the, the hands and the forearm. It's like one of those things where, like, maybe after a bunch of wear and tear, these things might start to, you know, pull off of the shield. Who knows? But at the moment, it looks pretty good, and uh, it fits them well. These guys really are awesome, and this movie line is just getting really cool. Like, now you have these awesome, huge, gigantic threats for your Ninja Turtles to fight on yourselves. Before, you were just fighting foot soldiers in the... The regular old Shredder, but now you got the Super Shredder, and you got Toka and Razar. And just look at this whole line. Look at them all. This is the uh, the scale for this whole movie line so far. And obviously, Super Shredder towers over everybody else, and Splinter is the smallest of them. But, like, these figures are huge, and they're just awesome looking. Like, you know, if I know April's coming this year, but, like, if they just ended this line right now, like, I'd be happy. Like, I don't even know what I could possibly ask for other than April. <laughs> Boy, another great year so far for turtle collecting. You know, it's only the beginning of 2021 and I'm pretty excited. And I had a lot to say about these guys because these guys are amazing. I mean, like I said earlier, their sculpts are great. The, ex the articulation works well. They look great next to the Ninja Turtles. Ah, man, things are great. But I, I, I think that there was something I, I forgot. What did I forget to talk about? Oh yeah! The uh, 1991 Toka and Razar toys from Playmates. And, you know, I'm running out of time here. So, uh, check my channel soon because I will have a review of the 1991 Playmates Toka and Razar figures. And I will talk a little bit about, you know, their origins a little bit. Uh, I didn't really... I didn't really go into like any about their personalities or anything like that in this video, so I'll try to cover more of that kind of stuff. More about the history of Toka and Razar, more about where they have come and gone in comic books, cartoons, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, most importantly, I'll talk about how they took the designs from the movie and translated them into these toys uh, from Playmates. So, thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Check out all my other Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle reviews. Uh, I also have some Ghostbusters, Thundercats, and some Masters of the Universe stuff up. So, see you later.